Hi, this is Mitch Mitchell, and I'm going to tell you a truth. You know, over the course of the last, might as well say four or five weeks, I've just been kind of running myself silly. I'm sure that some of you, not many, but some of you saw the video I did where I was talking about leaving Memphis finally. And maybe you saw the videos where I was in Orlando and I was in San Diego. And last week I did an interview on this page. And it was the first one I'd done from home in a while. And I got to tell you the truth. I wore myself out. I probably hadn't been sick for 15 years. 1999, I remember, because I had strep throat as I got close to my... Heck, forget that. The weekend of my 40th birthday, I got sick because I had strep throat. Um, and other than that, for 15 years, I may have had like a little cold for a day. That was about it. I had coughs. I had allergic reactions. Like when I first went to Memphis, whatever was in the air, I had some kind of allergies to that. I've had allergies to dust. But, you know, as far as a sickness, um, catching a cold and getting sick like that, I hadn't had anything like that in a very long time. And it was odd because I didn't know what to do. I didn't have a fever. I just didn't feel well. Um, and so I said, well, you know, do I take aspirin? Do I take ibuprofen, Tylenol? Do I take NyQuil? Do I take DayQuil? Do I take cough medicine at all? Do I take something to try to help me breathe better? I really didn't know what to do. My wife said fluids and take the NyQuil and the DayQuil and take all that stuff. She had her special concoction that I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I'll just tell you it burnt my throat more ways than one. Uh, and it took some time to recover from this. Even last week, uh, when I first got home, when I, get, I came home for good on October 31st, and when I first got home, I still wasn't feeling well. And that's where she had me making this concoction, this stuff that I don't know where she, oh, I think she got it from Dr. Oz. Doggone Dr. Oz, always getting in my life somehow. <laughs> but still, she got it from that. This is her concoction. She swore by it. I did that for some days last week. And, you know, eventually I started feeling better. I still have a tinge of a cough, but that used to happen all the time. So I'm not, you know, fretting over a cough. The rest of me feels great now. Except for the fact that I really haven't gotten any rest. One of my plans had been when I got home, I was going to pretty much take two weeks to try to rest, try to get some sleep, because I almost never slept without pills. I hate to say that, but, you know, um, the, what's it called, Tylenol? No, yeah, Tylenol or Acetaminophen PM. That stuff made me sleep, but it also made me wake up groggy. So I decided I wasn't going to go that route to get some sleep. I was just going to try to see if I could sleep. And according to Fitbit, and I've got the blue band right now because I lost the red band <laughs> on the last flight coming back home. That's a story in itself. So I've had to order a new, another red band. But um, I, I, you know, according to Fitbit, the most I slept in one night since I've been home is four hours. It's just not really going to get it done. I need more sleep. Now, now you're probably wondering what is all this I'm talking about. Well. I'm talking about this because last, I'm going to say, well, this past summer, I don't remember exactly when, but I'm going to link to the video where I talked about it. Um, I had a weekend where I just had some stuff that just happened. I, I basically, I'm diabetic and I crashed. My number went so low, I couldn't really get out of bed. And I was dizzy and shaky. And that's what happens sometimes. I, I had gotten really low because I'd exercised too much. Then the next day, it went way off the scale the other direction because I ate the wrong things, but I ate a lot of it trying to make sure I didn't crash. And I went the other direction. So since I've been using basically the MyFitnessPal app, which I've talked about before, and I added the Fitbit, I've been under control, and that part has been pretty good in my life. But what led to all that was having a conversation with my wife. And, you know, this happens sometimes. And she said something that I thought was a perfect mantra, and something that I said, you know what, I need to try to live by that, which is take care of yourself first. And as easy as that sounds and as beautiful as that sounds and as true as that sounds, most of us don't really do that. 
Uh, we think we do. Even the narcissists think they take care of themselves first, but they really don't. Because taking care of yourself basically says that you're going to do all the things that make you comfortable, things that make you happy, things that make you feel good. And it encompasses a lot more than just eating better and sleeping better. Uh, for me, for instance, it takes planning. I mean, since I've been home, I've not planned a single thing. I've pretty much just been going off the cuff. And I've had, uh, I had an event last Friday, and it was just an off-the-cuff thing that I decided to go to, kind of a networking thing that was across town, and I didn't think correctly, <laughs> and so I took the wrong road going through the highway, where, of course, traffic was backed up instead of going in a way that I initially thought I should do, because I didn't plan it. And that kind of thing has been happening. Uh, I ended up having to take my mother to Niagara Falls. That hadn't been in my plans. And that basically killed about six or seven hours in a day that I wasn't expecting being on the road again. And I've just got so many other things that are on my mind. And you would think that my silly self would think to write things down so that I've got it planned right. Because I know that writing the things down, having it all out, and then being able to label you know, what's the most important and try to do things in order... I know that works well for me, and it works well for a lot of other people, but I haven't done it. I ordered this book from Brendan Bouchard called The Motiva Motivation Manifesto, and I've seen, you know, the couple of the videos, first videos that he's put out, and he's got like seven or eight videos so far, and I haven't put anything into place. So really, I haven't been taking care of myself first. And I really need to get to that because I need to get to a clear state of mind. Um, I mean, how am I going to take care of my business? How am I going to take care of me? How am I going to make money? How am I going to pay the national grid bill <laughs> if, if we have another year like last year with all those polar, polar vortexes? And I wasn't even home last year and my bills every month were $500 a month. And we're supposed to have one of those this coming weekend and then one next week. What the devil? This is November. I mean, we did have snow already, but this is Syracuse. We're supposed to have snow in November. Um, but, you know, there is this thing that basically says that sometimes we try to take care of other people or sometimes we're just kind of selfish. But even when we're selfish, we're not really taking care of ourselves. We don't do the things that really make us feel better. I can tell you the truth. Since I've been using my fitness pal and the Fitbit, my, I don't have those stomach issues that I was having before. So I'm not sick to my stomach anymore. I'm not eating a lot of the wrong things because this stuff is tracking it for me. And that's actually a wonderful feeling. But that's only part of it. I've got to take care of some of these other things. And I know that I'm not alone. I know that there's a lot of you who aren't doing the same kind of things either. You're not doing the things that make you feel good, the things that make you happy. Um, you know, nothing says that we're always supposed to be happy, but if we try to do these things to take care of ourselves, we will be happier. We will feel better. And when you feel better and you feel happier, you want to help other people to get to that feeling as well. So I just want to say, you know, let's all try to take care of ourselves first. You know, if you're on an airplane, and my God, I got this airplane thing down, they always tell you, put on your own mask first. If it drops down, put on your own mask before you try to help someone else. Man, there's nothing more true than that because you can't help anybody else if you don't help yourself first. So that's my little bit of wisdom for the night or for the day, depending on when or if you watch this. Um, you know, let me know your thoughts. Give me your opinions and, you know, let's take this journey together. So let me know. And if this is your first time, Watching this, you know what? I got plenty of stuff like this and some other things. I got a lot of interviews. Think about subscribing. You know, first time I'm mentioning this, and I may mention this another time, but when I hit 200 subscribers, I'm giving 50 bucks away. Yes, I am. You got a long way to go, though, so don't hold your breath for a while unless all of a sudden I get really popular. Yeah, that's going to happen anytime soon. Anyway, I'm Mitch Mitchell. Y'all take care, and thank you for watching.